And Hamed Abdelalim wants to know this. What role does the Higgs boson play in quantum physics? Actually, you could have asked that question about any particle. The, the proton, the neutron, the, uh, the electron, neutrinos, quarks, they are all subject to the laws of the quantum. Actually, so is the whole universe, but s the smaller you are, the more you manifest these laws. And so the Higgs boson, it's, it's a quantum particle. And how does the Higgs boson work? It makes a field. And that field grants mass to any particle that moves through it. It's a badass particle. If you have to be a particle, that would be the one to be. Don't tell anybody, but that's the one to be. And you might ask, how does it actually assign mass? Think of a Hollywood party. If you go to a Hollywood party and nobody knows you, you can just go straight to the bar like that. You have low Hollywood mass. If you are famous and you walk into the party, everyone gathers around you. They want your autograph, they want to take your picture. And you're working towards the bar, but you're moving really slow. You have a lot of inertia, slow inertia, and you can't get through the mass. You can't get through it. So you have high party mass. A Hollywood party is exactly the Higgs field. So what party is it where you sit home and lament your career and cry? What particle is that? That's the neutron. It has no charge, so therefore, it can attract no one. Tim Gurr says, do two entangled particles communicate faster than the speed of light? I've heard it's apparently instant. It turns out one of the rules of quantum physics is that because particles are also waves, if there's a particle on this side of a hill and it can't get across to the other side, the wave function does exist and actually exists in a little bit on the other side of the hill. So the electron can disappear here and reappear there, collapsing the wave function, and the electron would have moved from there to there instantly, basically faster than the speed of light. It's called quantum mechanical tunneling, and it happens all the time. And it is mysterious and beautiful. So what's the hype about tachyons then? Oh, so tachyon is a hypothetical particle named for being very fast. Tachyos is Greek for speed. The tachometer gets the, it's the same root. So a tachyon is a particle, hypothetical particle, that exists only faster than light. And it can go to infinitely high speeds, and the slowest you can ever get this thing to go is the speed of light itself. It turns out this is not violated in Einstein's equations because you're not crossing the speed of light. You're coming into existence faster than the speed of light. And you put that into the equations, it ends up living backwards in time. This is a backwards time traveling particle. Hypothesized, we've never discovered one. So we don't know if they really exist, they probably don't, but it's fun to talk about them because they don't violate Einstein's relativity equation. Schrodinger's cat relates a little bit to what people have called the observer effect. Uh -huh. Okay, where if you observe something, you change it. So I can respond to both of those in the same in the same pop, if you allow me. Okay. okay? So let, let's do the observer effect for the moment. So it's unfortunate that somebody called it the observer effect because then New Age folk and other people who were basically scientifically illiterate were thinking it's your consciousness that affects what you're observing. Dude. And oh my gosh, con there's a consciousness field and they go running off in a, you know, off the cliff. See, we're what you don't understand is that like particles <laughs> are totally alive. Okay. <laughs> And the reason why there is a collective consciousness in the universe is because, like, all of these particles that are spinning, what they're actually doing is conducting thought and consciousness. They're, they're thinking. They're thinking. They're thinking, man. <laughs> rocks think. Trees think. Yeah. yeah. More than rocks. Right. So uh, let, let, me, let me cut through all of that and simply say that you're sitting there and I can see you because, right. in fact, you're illuminated by if not sunlight through an open window, uh, an uncurtained window, but artificial light within the room, all right? That light hits your face, bounces off your face, goes through the computing system, and I see you, okay? That light carries energy. 
every photon of light that strikes your face carries energy. Mm. And then they, they, most of them reflect, others uh, get absorbed. Actually, it depends on how dark your skin is. Skin right. is very dark, it'll absorb most of them. If you have That's very- because, you know, photons, they want to be a part of this, baby. <laughs> 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 Let me get some. That, oh, <laughs> Let me get oh, some. I see, where we're la- I see where we're landing. Mm. Oh, we got, ooh, we got some good chocolate happening <laughs> over here. <laughs> so here's the thing. If I made you tinier and tinier and tinier, right. so you're no longer a macroscopic human, you're a microscopic particle. Okay. There's a particle size below which when you open the curtains and shine light on you, that light will hit you and pop you into another location. So I'm smaller than the photon? Than the, what the, your, or what it, your, your capacity to move to a different state of existence, that the energy that that is required to make that happen, correct, oh, got it. is it's now energy. the same as the energy of the light that's hitting you. Gotcha. So you hit me with in a order ray to see, beam. In order to see you, Right. And then you pop somewhere else. And I say, where'd you go? Right. What are you doing? So am I there? Am I not there? Well, we'll never really know because you're hitting me with something that makes me not there once you're exposing me to it. Correct. And and since it happens on the moment you're exposed, not the moment I see you, I will never know what you were doing. Exactly. Okay. If you're small enough for that light energy to, to affect you in that way. So that's why we don't think about this in everyday life, because we're too big for light to pop us into other states of existence. Exactly. But particles, electrons, atoms, nuke, all of this, it happens all the time. And this was a very disturbing discovery in the 1920s. We're in the centennial decade of the discovery of quantum physics in the 1920s. Because you discover this, I want to see what you're doing. Oh my gosh, you're not going to let me see what you're doing. Because the light I shine on you in order to see it is, so So it's really, uh, it's not so much an observer effect, it's right. a measurement effect. Exactly. Okay, get right. the human brain out. It's just a d- device right. to measure you. you, you can't know it. Okay. Right. So here's what happens. You say to yourself, um, you put a cat in a box, and if the cat is a quantum cat, with two states, states of existence, it's either dead or alive. While it's in the box, you have no idea which it is. And so the way we describe this in quantum physics, if you do the experiments, okay, so some percentage of the time, you open the box, the cat will be alive, others, the cat will be dead. And so you, what we say is that the the cat's existence is a superposition of being dead and being alive. So the wishing bone experiment, it's the wishing yeah. bone experiment. Okay, so we break the wish the wishbone in half. We don't look at our pieces. One has a big piece, one has a small piece. I go to Andromeda, I look at mine and I find out I have the big piece. I instantly know you have the small piece. Now there's nothing yeah. surprising about that because it was established at the table which one had the big piece and which one had the small piece. Right, right. Now, quantum entanglement says is much weirder. It says we break the wishing bone and it's at simultaneously in a state where I have the small piece, you have the big piece, and I have the big piece, you have the small piece. It has right. not yet been determined. And, By any and, entity. No, it is completely in a what we call a superposition but it has to match. We can't both have the small piece and we can't both have the big piece. That's right? why the two states are not, we both have the big piece. It's I big, you little, you right. big, I'm little. Those right. Two states. Exactly. But it, they have to match because they have to fit together to make the original wishing bone. Right. But it's not actually determined who has the big piece yet. And but quantum are, mechanics allows we, for this. We can't know. Is there some higher dimension? Is there God who would know? Well, if you're a real adherent to quantum mechanics, you would say that you've disproven the possibility of omniscience being, (laughs) because no, it is it is not established. In some sense, when we in our conventional thinking are accustomed to thinking certain things are real, 
What's real is the piece of the chicken bone is real. We're sure of it. But it's not, in some sense, real. What's real is the probability that's real and that's determined. And that is absolutely deterministic and can be predicted, the probability. But the, the existence of the pieces of bone themselves are not yet actualized. They don't actually have a concrete existence. So you're saying... Um, you and I are entangled with each other. Right. right. And we have In to be entangled. Right. We have to be entangled because we can't both have the small piece because that's not cool. So we have okay. to be entangled in such a way that we make, we fit together correctly to make the original wishing bone. So okay. I can okay. have the small piece. You could have the big piece. I could have the big piece. You could have the small piece. Yeah. But we don't know which one it is yet. It's not just that we don't know. It's that it doesn't actually assume a precise state yet. Okay, so okay. when when does it assume that precise state? Because at some point, it, this can't just be potential. At yeah. some point, there has to be a realization Actualized. of who has what piece. So yeah, when does that happen, so, and, and how do we determine that, and how do we observe that? So superpositions are very delicate. So when they do it, as you were saying, uh, Neil, like in the laboratory, everyone's trying to do this in the lab, and, and it's it's very, very, very delicate. You have to have systems that are not disrupted or disturbed in any way. So there was this sort of mystique that once I, I went to Andromeda and I looked at it, that the act of my conscious looking forced it to assume a certain state. And that's not really quite right. What happened was just all the molecules in my body and the air that I'm breathing and the room, all of these things uh, destroy the delicate superposition. They, they knock it about it. Imagine, you know, a pencil standing on its end. So yeah, if you go and clumsily look at it, you knock it over, but it doesn't have to do with your consciousness. It's mm -hmm. just the interaction of all the particles and all the molecules and all those things that make it impossible for it to maintain this delicate state of standing on its point. Okay, and so now so now the state becomes actualized in front of you. Yeah, now so now I know. look, and I know for sure I've got the big piece. I won. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened is I somehow seemingly forced faster than the speed of light from Andromeda to the earth, instantaneously forced your, your state to also assume a precise state. Because you can't know that without me also knowing my state. Right. Well, you no, can't, I can well, know it. I can look at it and know it. And I instantaneously know you have the small or uh, piece of bone and that's that, but you don't necessarily. Whether, whether I've looked at yet or not. That's right. So, and, but that's, but that's only because the 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 two there has to be that balance of big that's and right. small. That's exactly. the only reason. It's right. They have they have to fit together to make the original wishing bone. Exactly. It can't okay. be that I look at mine and then you also look at yours and we both have a, a big piece of wishing bone. There, theoretically, Doctor Tyson, do you think a superhero with the power of Interuniversal travel could ever be truly possible, or would the probability of the laws of physics in other universes being different from ours prevent that from ever happening? Could somebody do it? Awesome question. So, in the multiverse concept, yes, uh, these which, by the way, in Thor, that is what happens. It is the interuniversal travel because Thor wait, opens wait, from no. his world opens up a portal. No, no, no. His world. I think his world is in our universe. He just the portal gets you from his world oh, to our okay. part of the world. All right, so there you go. Isn't isn't that world sectors, and we're one of those sectors? I think it is. I think I you're thought, right. You're right. There. there are six sectors, right? Exactly. And we're one of them. We're one of them, and so this is easy access from one sector. So to So that's another. a wormhole. That's a wormhole. It's okay. essentially a wormhole. So, but this okay. would be an interuniversal portal from the multiverse. I got you. So in the multiverse, it's the, it's prescribed by the fact that these are fluctuations in the quantum. The early quantum universe, all right? And quantum physics uh, is, is a fascinating understanding of the structure of matter on the smallest scales. Right. Uh, there's, there's particles that pop in and out of existence. I mean, it's a stunning reality that exists at those scales. Now, the whole universe doesn't do that unless the entire universe were the size of an atom. Then when you pop particles in and out of existence, you're actually popping universes in and out of existence. Whoa. Whoa.
what, what I'm asking you, as yeah. a theoretical physicist, leading theoretical physicist, we have an observation, an astronomical observation, and it forces you to go back and re tweak. Are you tweaking Big Bang? Are you tweaking quantum physics? You're tweaking, what are you tweaking? Well, in this particular case, you really are tweaking something that we yet don't understand fully, which is dark matter. So that's ripe for being tweaked. But look, there so are dark other things. Dark matter is like mysterious gravity of the universe. And we have no idea what's causing it. But, but, I'll, but I'll give you another example, which has happened recently, right? There have been measurements of the rate of the expansion of space. And those measurements, very recently, are seeming to be incompatible with earlier measurements done in a different way. This had a whole other uh, recent result. A whole other recent result, exactly. Result. And this one, if it's correct, this is one that could really change our understanding of the early universe dramatically, right? In order to get the measurements that are done on the expansion of space looking at the microwave background radiation and those that are coming from looking at supernova explosions, to get those compatible right now is going to require perhaps tweaking the dark energy, it may require tweaking our understanding of the gravitational force. I mean, there are many things that may come into that particular Tweak reconciliation. our understanding of the gravitational force itself? Yeah, I mean, whenever you talk about dark energy, right? Everyone knows what dark energy is, yeah? No, well, I'm just saying, some people at home may not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so this energy-filling space that we believe re yields a repulsive gravity that's causing the universe to speed up in its acceleration. When, when it theoretically should be slowing that's down. That's all right, right. Ordinary gravity pulls things together. It should right. be slowing down. Okay. The shock that we got in 1998 is that it's not slowing down in the rate of expansion. It's speeding up. Against and, the wishes of gravity. And, well, here's the thing. We didn't understand gravity well enough. Gravity can not only be attractive, it can be repulsive. And that really wasn't taken into account in, until about 1998 when it comes to cosmology. Now... The possibility is maybe this outward push is itself getting stronger over time. And so that means thinking it was one thing would be an incomplete understanding of that phenomenon. Yes, and which that's would what actually is. change everything. But that's what which is, is why yes. you have to tweak string theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>